Hey guys, welcome to Wall Street Unplugged. This is the new format where we're going to have the interview today, and it's a very special interview I set up for you with someone that's very special to me, uh, someone that's helped me tremendously when it comes to building Curzio Research, uh, someone that's shared the ups and downs over the past four years where it's never easy to build a company, as any entrepreneur knows, someone that's incredibly important to you because she allows me to do my job and do these podcasts roll up her sleeves, get involved in stuff that I don't really want to get involved in <laughs> like when it comes to marketing and copy and everything else, kind of like a cheap operating officer. But even more important, it's the publisher of Curzio Research. Uh, she lets me do my job, provide research for you, travel all over the world. Very big part of, of Curzio Research. Her name is Veronica Charette. And let's bring her in now. Veronica, how's it going? Hi, Frank. Good. How are you today? Good. So I want to start this off because... This is an investment podcast and people love ideas. So I'm going to ask you for every single stock idea that you know, <laughs> which, which, I'm, which I'm kidding. But I love the fact that when I ask you to come on, you're like me, why do you want me to come on? Why should I come on? And, and I love that. For me, a lot of people like to see the behind the scenes, but I remember, and I'm going to compare this to two people that are a little bit more high profile to us. And that's Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. And you have Sheryl Sandberg, right? Who's a chief operating officer. And I loved listening to... Cheryl Sandberg, uh, sh uh, just break down Facebook because she's in charge of almost everything in terms of operations, marketing strategy, and you know, Zuckerberg wanted to be hands off. She's worth one point five billion now. Hopefully, I could do that for you one day. <laughs> but just yeah, learning about that. the learning about the behind the scenes, and I want to go over you know even for entrepreneurs that, that always email me and say, hey, you know. How is it running a business? And so many people have helped me, but there's so many ups and downs and mistakes that we make that I like to talk about. And most importantly, talk about our growth initiatives because a lot of you, it should be a really big deal to you because maybe a lot of you is like, well, we like stock ideas, Frank. That's why we listen to your podcast because you're going to get more stock ideas because as this business grows, we're able to hire more and more people. We're able to build out our newsletters, build out our organization. And for me, I think it's very important just to see what's going on behind the scenes and the people who are most important to me to make this happen. I wanted to bring you on to discuss that. And I guess... Uh, I mean, where to start? I mean, this journey has been pretty amazing for both of us, right? Uh, lots of, of positives, lots of you know, learning experience. And let's start there. I mean, it, was it something that you expected? Because we, you came to us, and maybe I should go over this in, in the next segment, but you, you came to us a, as a consultant, right? And when was that again? I forget. Right. That was uh, early 2018, was, maybe? Yeah, January 2018. And you were here for yeah. a couple of months, and then you said, look, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. You remember that? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, but I did. When we bring consultants in here, you know, we pay them okay. But for me, it's always about, you know, let's see the quality work, see what they could do. Uh, the feedback I got from everybody was, was just unbelievable uh, with the work you've done in terms of operational, making things easier for people. Uh, you know, so many aspects going on, so many things going on, especially when you're growing a business where... Uh, people could rely on you to be more organized. And, and I offered you a job and said, hey, you know, I'd like for you to become publisher. Uh, shout out to everybody out there who, you know, is a consultant and wants a bigger role and thinks, hey, you know what? I want more money at the start or whatever. You know, it, it's a process. And for me, that character and credibility is built during that time. And, and you build it tremendously to the point where we offered to you, you accepted it. Now that you accept it, <laughs> and that was it in 2018, which, what have you learned the most? Because we've been through this journey, again, lots of ups and downs. I'm, I'm curious to hear fr from your side, and I know that you are someone that's never going to kiss my ass, so you're going to tell me exactly how it is, which I love. It's always business-related. But what have you learned fr from the ups and downs of, of being at Curzio Research now, pretty close to, to you know over three years, close to four years? Um, wow, I have learned so much. I have my... Uh pause and pretty much everything that we do. Um, and in the past, I've been involved in the financial publishing industry in, you know, much smaller roles. Uh, so, but I still, I'm the type of person that I just, once I get started into something, I'm really curious about how it works. I want to know all of the ins and outs of uh, what's going on and how things are working. And I like to have my hands in a little bit of everything. Uh, so it's been so far uh, growing the company has been amazing. I mean, I love having my uh, hands in everything and being involved in everything from, you know, marketing to operations and always just trying to improve things and understand how things work and make 
life easier for you as well as the rest of the team and just grow the team. And we're such a small team uh, and we're so close knit that it's, it's just, it's been a lot of fun and I've learned (laughs) so much. I mean, everything from credit card processing to, you know, everything that it took to get our security token offering off the ground uh, to in increasing my knowledge in all of the marketing and systems. And yeah, there's so much that goes into it. And the fact that, uh, you know, you had to be involved in every single aspect of all of that, like it's not your forte. It's not what you are incredible at, which is the analysis. And you were just like spitting your wheels on all of the noise. Uh, and, you know, you really needed to get back to just the analysis. And, well, not like that's all you do, uh, but get back to the stuff that you were really great at and that adds value to our subscribers. Yeah. And thank you. I appreciate that. And I always said that one of the toughest things as a business owner is is letting go right? Because you want your hands in everything. Everything needs to be done your way and you need people to trust. And I've seen so many businesses fail to grow, not necessarily fail, but they stay at the same level because, you know, when it comes to, you know, marketing, design, copy, technology, you know, coding, like you said, credit card processing, editorial. I mean, you're bringing so many groups together where people just watch the, they'll listen to the podcast and be like, oh, this is cool. I like Frank. I like his personality or I hate Frank or whatever. They're going to email me and uh, they'll listen to, they'll see my videos, uh, it, it, listen to, you know, my videos uh, for, you know, my financial newsletters, which we provide videos for that now. And, and that's, they see it behind the scenes. It's so much more. And, you know, having someone like you and having my partners, uh, we've had Greg and you'd hear from Stephanie, those, those are our partners, uh, and being able to rely on you guys has been difficult for me. And I'm sure it's difficult for people out there what your companies are looking to grow. And I'm not saying we're going to be super successful and maybe it doesn't work out or whatever. But, you know, just to see the growth and see what we did wrong for me, one of the biggest things is letting go, having people you know, trust people with that responsibility of helping build the company in certain areas. And I always said, even of, of the partners, when I talk to you, is your job is to hire someone that's in your position that's going to be smarter than you. Right. Because the definition of a perfect business is what? And people say, well, you know, you make a lot of money. No, that's not the definition. Definition of the perfect business is you being able to walk away and the company grows secularly, right, for a very, very long time. And you're basically hands off uh, and receiving a check every single day. That's the definition of a very, very successful business to me. Right. Not that I want to be hands off, but you, you have to rely on people that you could trust. And this way, when you do that, they're taking more off your plate and you can focus on what you're great at. And we all know what we're great at. And most people, you know, you have to check your ego at the door, which I do. I know what I'm not great at. And that's why I want to hire people to do the things that I'm not great at, which is, you know, a lot of stuff that you've been doing and excelling in. And that's, you know, led to growth. And I think that's a very important message here. I mean, I'm interested to see the comments, frankcruiserresearch.com about this interview, but uh, you know, those are one of the things that I remember where, where just being able to delegate and give responsibility to, to the right people. And now you're doing that as well. But as you get bigger, it also gets more difficult, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's probably, uh, you know, one of the things that I don't look forward to as we grow is those growing pains. I've been through them before. And, you know, I do like to have my pause in everything. Um but it's I we're on the same wavelength when it comes to the philosophy, like hiring and training the next you, whatever that you might be, uh, is imperative to growth. And um, I I don't look forward to the growing pains. I mean, we've already gone through some, um, but finding amazing people, like I was saying, our our team is just so great, and just continuing to find great people is a huge hurdle that uh, that you have to conquer in order to successfully grow the business. And you go through that, right? Sometimes you hire someone and the salary, yeah. you know, you're paying too much for them. And other times you just, you know, everybody, everybody wants a lot of money off the start. For me, if you, if we make an offer to you and you request more money, I think those people who, who need to understand that your responsibilities just went up by a factor of 10 and the time frame just got shortened tremendously. And I think people need to realize that because we hire you, like my expectations are here. When you're saying, well, you know, I deserve this, your expectations are freaking here. And we wind up letting people go because they didn't exceed those expectations in the first three months. And I said, hey, you know what? You're getting paid to be great and you're not great right away. And I haven't seen it. 
you know, again, that that's kind of a lesson that 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 we learned together. Uh, now, going through this business, one of the most important things, uh, and I joke around with you because you are now, I would consider you an expert when it comes to security tokens. You've been with me from the beginning. When we first launched this thing, it was really, really crazy. You know, people say being first to the market is great. A lot of times being first to the market is not great, <laughs> as we learn, but just seeing how everything developed, dealing with so many different partnerships, and now finally seeing the security token industry really take off. I mean, that has to have you excited. I know you're excited. Uh, what are you looking forward to that industry? Because again, a lot of people want to know more about it, and I can guarantee that you know more about that industry than 99.9% of people, and it is going to be booming, and it's starting now. It's starting to grow. You're seeing you know, more exchanges trade. You see more more uh, platforms starting to trade these things, uh, more people launching money through them, even through reggae offerings, which provides, you know, not accredited investors who invest in private companies. And the good news with security tokens is you get at the early stage, not at $40 billion valuations like Robinhood, but a couple of things probably have you really excited in this. And again, this is something that we, we talk about often in this industry of how we're going to grow and we want to position ourselves because a lot of people are coming to us right now and uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. Um, I have to say, when you know you first started talking about doing an STO, I was like, STO, what's STO? You know, I'm Googling, <laughs> oh, security token offering, okay. Um, and I was like, oh, that's a pie in the sky. But um, you know, I am the type that I'm, I'm a little uh, more cautious and don't take a lot of risks, and so I definitely partner up with people that. Um, do take risks. And I was like, well, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We don't succeed. Um, and I have to say, like, I just as we got more and more into it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is actually going to happen. We can actually do this. Um, and there was, there is still so much to learn. I mean, you can say that, you know, I no more than 99.9% .9 of people. Um, but I still feel like a complete uh, infant when it comes to this industry. There's so much to know. Um, I mean, everything, so much red, red tape. Um, I didn't know what KYC or AML meant when we first uh, started this. Um, you know, what's a custodian? How do you set them up? How do you deal with them? Uh, I mean, jurisdictions, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, reg A, reg D, reg S, reg, I mean, I was, yeah, it's, it's insane. Um, and that's all before the offering even happened. Um, you know, since then there's the issuance and then getting um, approved for an exchange. And it's, it's insane. Um, it's just, it's a huge rabbit hole. And, but one of the cool things about being first to the market, I think is that, um, you know, everyone just wants it to happen so bad. Everyone's like really, really just helping each other. Um, and they just, it doesn't matter. There's like very little competition. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of like, hurdles and hiccups and what we thought was going to happen didn't happen. And so it's a lot of uh, trying to figure out what to do next uh, just to like fix what didn't work that we thought was going to work or that we were assured was going to work. Um, so it's been, it's been a whirlwind and we're not out of it yet by any means. Um, but it's been fun. I've learned so much um, and continue all the time. It's been a huge challenge, but um, a really fun, fun time. You, you know, v, with security tokens, people are starting, we're getting more questions. Our file has been, you know, known about this for a while. We raised $4 million for our file. It's pretty amazing because this is when people raise money, they go to outside sources for us to get it from our investors and for them to trust us on something that they never heard of. And I was joking around and saying, man, you guys are crazy for doing this. <laughs> but deep down, I think you feel the same way as I do is, you know, it's our responsibility where, man, I'm going to do everything I can to make this work. For, to get that trust from people uh, is incredible for a brand new idea. But the security and in token industry, what I realized our advantage is what are you doing? You're combining crypto, basically, and, and blockchain technology with uh, investment banking. 
And I always knew the investment banking part, and I needed to learn more about the blockchain part. And as I realized with all of our partners, I realized they lacked in either one or the other. And as we got, I think the both of us got more educated on blockchain, we really became leaders here. And not saying, you know, look, the industry could change or whatever, but I think we were able to bring this to market and go from A to Z when a lot of people failed is because we understood that the end result is my shareholders. My, what's best for our shareholders? What did we tell them? We told them, hey, you're going to be able to trade this in a year from now. We wind up going on a merge exchange and we got some good things going on and we're going to see more liquidity in the future. Uh, a lot of things are opening up in the US finally, but you know that was our goal. Hey, you're investing in this. One year later, you have the opportunity to trade this, which is good because maybe you and I don't do a good job. And if we're a private company and you're locked in for seven to 10 years and we're not doing a good job, you're locked in. You know, maybe that never goes public. You never have a liquidity period. But you know, to understand that and to see the advantage you have over partners and which partners you want to work with. But yeah, I realized that a lot of people who are brilliant on the technology and are not so brilliant on the investment banking and, and vice versa, right? To the point where, you know, we had several sets of lawyers we had to use because some of them understood blockchain and others didn't understand investment banking. And, and, you know, that was the biggest thing. So setting this up is still very difficult for people because you need, if you structure it wrong, you could have the SC coming after you and you really did nothing wrong, right? If you structure it the wrong way. So, you know, just seeing how this developed and how it's combined and how, you know, just crypto in general is now mainstream. You know, for me, uh, I, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a massive growth market and I like being in the middle of it, but, you know, that doesn't underscore the huge challenges we had, right? And everybody thinks, wow, you agree, like Facebook was great or whatever, right off the bat. You know, not necessarily. I mean, you have lots of difficulties uh, and, you know, sharing those experiences, I, I think just strengthen the business and strengthens definitely management uh, going through those times because all businesses, right? It, it's never, you know, hey, we're going to go straight up. Parabolic, everything's going to be great. No way. I mean, you look at IBM, Apple almost went out of business. Every single company, every single, Microsoft dead for 12, 13 years. Every single company goes through their ups and downs. And every time you want to be able to learn as much as you can and go through that and also listen to the right people, I think, to help you avoid those big mistakes, which, again, a lot has to do with checking your ego uh, at the door. And I think I think we're both pretty pretty good at, at doing that while maintaining that confidence, right? You have to have confidence in your business and, and believe that you're great at something, but not to the point where, where you're totally arrogant and where you don't want to listen to everybody else, right? Yeah. No, you you walked that line really well, I have to say. Um, and I was just, this totally isn't a brown nosing moment e either, uh, but I was just so impressed that uh, your listeners, subscribers, readers um, were had that much faith in you. And I, I, it was a learning moment for me. Like it really solidified that I made the right choice um, in working, you know, with Curzio Research, joining the team because um, I've never seen anything like that before. You had another and, offer uh, on the table with somebody I that did. I know who I actually like. They, they, they're a good, good place and everything. And I just, you know, and I talked to him afterwards too, and he was like, "Oh, I guess you got her instead of me and everything." But he was a really good person. But we did, you know, we offered you a really good package, I think, that which you took. And but uh, it was close, I think. It was pretty close back then. But I know, you know, that that other offer that you had was uh, was pretty impressive, and it's by somebody I do respect. So, yeah, yeah, me too. And I had worked with them before, so I, I was. You're right. I had one foot out the door for sure. <laughs> All right, so so let's switch to here because we talked about security token industry. I want to talk about you know our growth plans because if you're an entrepreneur out there, when you first start a business, uh, the, the first thing you want is what you're like. I'm gonna be as big as my competitors, or maybe you got let go by someone and you're pissed off and you, you know. But you have to realize it takes a very very long time, and sometimes you get too aggressive where you know you're spending money, you're hiring too fast. Uh, you know, for us, I, I wanted to talk about, you know, where we are right now and the changes we're going to see, because right now I feel like we have lots of great ideas on the table. We want to focus on the biggest ones. One of them is restructuring this podcast to the point where, you know, it's better to listen to, where it's very difficult to listen to, to 90 minute podcasts. I don't have even two hours, uh, separating it into separate issues for everybody. I think that that's a big plus of what we heard, you know, we'll listen to our customers. Uh, but there's lots of uh, new things that, that people could expect. And why don't I hand that off to you? Because uh, that's going to result in hopefully more revenue coming in. And when more revenue comes in and we grow this business through even with the security token, which makes a publicly traded company, means that we have money to hire more people and put some great newsletters and more great picks in front of you and, and even more great guests. 
Yeah. So um, as most of our subscribers know, we've added some editors recently. Um, in the last couple of years, we've got Jenya Toronova uh, that does our uh, Money Flow Trader as well as Unlimited Income. And then we also have Luke Downey that we just launched a product uh, or a service, uh, the Big Money Report, uh, last month, July. July, two months ago now. And uh, we do plan on rolling out a premium service with Luke as well in the next couple of months, um, hopefully uh, September, maybe October. And um, so that's exciting. But from the Wall Street Unplugged podcast standpoint, uh, it's just, it's really, really grown in the last three years. Uh, it used to be much shorter, like maybe an hour at the longest, and it had really gotten a lot longer. And so we just started thinking about, you know, how people kind of digest or consume um, content and thought that it would probably be better to still keep all of the information that and all of the segments that Frank offers with the interview, as well as you know, we call it his rant or his monologue, just whatever happens to be on his mind that week. And it always still uh, is surrounding um, investment ideas and ha what's happening in the world that and how it uh, affects the investment investing in the markets. And then um, recently, well, last year, we introduced kind of Daniel to everyone who is j great. And he just brings fresh eyes to Frank. And they like to go over, you know, whatever the headlines are and kind of really bring um, some, a different point of view. And sometimes Frank and Daniel's uh, points of view are very different. So a different point of view on what the headlines are that week. And uh, but in addition to those, you know, the, th the three seg segments of the Wall Street Unplugged, we also have um, some amazing educational content that Jenya and Luke have been writing. And a lot of times our readers were confused thinking that we're sending them marketing information when really we're trying to help bring them, you know, uh, perspectives from Jenya and uh, Luke uh, and educate them to try to make them more knowledgeable investors. And so we've been trying to, I mean, we've been sending these emails out, but for whatever reason, people were getting confused between our offers, our special offers and this educational content. So we really wanted to like make it obvious that, that we are trying to send out useful content to people to help them become better investors. And Wall Street Unplugged, the Wall Street Unplugged podcast is just one way that we can do that. So this week we are rolling out what we're calling WSU Daily. It's free daily content. Uh, as a reader, you're going to be able to consume it the way you want to consume it, either on a daily basis by having it delivered to your inbox, or you can actually just have it summarized at the end of the week on Sunday and receive it that way if that's what you prefer. And Really, we're just trying to make sure that all of our readers and listeners are getting all of this amazing content. We call it content, education, article, podcasts, etc., in a timely manner, but more importantly, the way that they want to consume it when they have time to consume it. And so that's been an initiative that we've been working on for a while. And I'm I'm hoping we definitely want your feedback, Frank at CurziaResearch dot com. Why don't Let you give your email address? Shame no. email. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if the ship goes down, you publish it, pal. It's all on you now. So <laughs> <laughs> I read all of the support at CurziaResearch dot com emails. <laughs> I know you do because you send them to me and said, well, this person did this, said yep. this and this person, what'd you do to piss them off? And then, <laughs> but, uh, which I get all the time, but just, you know, for us, it's, we'll listen to the customers, right? We, we want to know exactly how you guys feel. That's why I tell you to email me. I mean, we have an amazing network now of listeners that have helped me get into trends and, and ideas uh, faster than, than you'll hear about them uh, uh, everywhere. 
even the, the auto chip sector, right? We said, listen, this this is a major, major problem, and these guys are lying to you. you guys from Ford, the executive CEOs and GM, and saying this is not a one quarter, two quarter problem, and, and that's what they were telling everybody. Now you've seen 40, 50 cent declines in production. And now they just came out recently, like yesterday, and said this could be years before they they you know they solve this problem. And, and you know it, it, we get that from our network, not because I'm some kind of genius or whatever, but we have people. You know, you never know who's listening, right? And, and it's pretty incredible when you talk to someone who owns like, you know, a bunch of dealerships or someone that's it, within the supply chains of this. But just having that network is incredible. So we want to hear from you. And, and that's what makes our products better. That's how you build a great brand. Uh, v, I always bring up Amazon where, you know, if you order something from Amazon and it's broken, you call them. You don't have to just say, hey, I just, it's the second you say broken, they give you a free one. They don't, even get, don't send it back. We'll give you another one. And, and, you know, it makes me tell that story to a lot of people. And I think that that's really, really important because... Uh, I always say you could be pissed off at what I say and what we do, but let us know why, because that's how we become a better company. And for me, researching companies for over 30 years, especially small caps, seeing those that thrive and a lot of them, which most of them don't, and, and just become much smaller and, and go bankrupt eventually, which happens a lot in small cap world. Uh, I've never seen a business thrive that doesn't focus on their customers, right? So, and that's the biggest thing for us. So we want to provide you know, top-notch research. If people aren't doing that job, that's up to you and I to make that decision and say, hey, you know what? It's not working, and you know, that might piss a couple of people off, but it's in the best interest of you to get someone in front of you that's going to help you make money and educate you, right? So that's one of the, some of the things that I learned. But also, you know, a lot of growth is coming from you know, new, new site design, which which will be coming up. Uh, you know, again, I'll get more into the security token, but just a lot of initiatives happen. Why, right? V, like you said, is because we're, we're listening to our customers, and sometimes it is that easy, and people make it more difficult than, than it has to be, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do get feedback, and I'm always amazed at some of the things that uh, you know people think. Uh, you know, you're you're just in this for yourself, and it's like, wow, how could how could they possibly think that if they you know spent any time listening to what you have to say? Uh, I don't know how they could possibly think that you're in it for yourself. I mean, the hours that you put in, that we all put into the business in general. Um, yeah, this is this is definitely a publishing company that is in it for their investors, like to improve the education and the knowledge base for of their investors, as well as you know try to help them just become better investors and make money. Yeah. And just to be clear, guys, uh, you know, with my partners, I told them all, including you, that, you know, I'm not hiring you to, to kiss my ass. You could hire anyone to kiss your ass. It's if you always keep it for the business, uh, we've had heated arguments back and forth. We've had that, but it's always about business. And afterwards, we'll go out and have a drink or whatever uh, where we have strong opinions. And once I think we come up with the decision on what to do, we're all on board. We're all on board. Okay. And even if I'm like, ah, all right, I'm not to, it, it, we're all on board. Like if I have an idea and I have all three partners saying, listen, this this isn't going to work. Why? And you have data supported and we did this this time. It didn't work or whatever. You know, it, they're able to convince me, you know. So it, it's to me, that's really, really important in running a good business. And, and, and you know, the partners have been, you know, incredible, including UV and, and just uh, – but you know, yes, V gets heated and angry and yells at me sometimes I and do. puts me in my place, which which I think everybody kind of needs, you know. <laughs> uh, but that happens every now and then. So I'm glad to have you around the, to do that. But for someone that's focusing on operations and everything involved, guys, again, I don't know how this interview is going to go. And I wanted I know people like the behind the scenes, V, and I know you're, you're a huge part with the CEO investors. I'm sure every single one of them know you because every time they have questions or whatever, you're there to answer them. And they always tell me, you know, she's great. She knows the stuff. But that's because we've been through everything, so many different problems and everything. Now we know a lot of the solutions and we know where we want to go with this part of the business that I think is going to be a massive secular growth industry and something that's going to disrupt the entire investment banking landscape. Something I've been saying for two years, took a little bit of a long time, but I think it's kind of happening now, right? It totally is. Yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, in the beginning, you kind of, you can keep, see the phases of businesses because, or uh, markets. In the beginning, I was saying that everyone just wanted to help each other and, you know, everyone was excited about it. And now you're really starting to see people kind of try to get their positions and, you know, take their positions in the game and specialize in different things. And so you, it, it's a sure sign that we're moving forward. 
No, I, I hear you. I hear you. So, V, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully that wasn't too crazy for you and too uncomfortable or whatever, and I'm glad you came on. I think uh, it, it's important for branding, too, just to see, like, the people behind the scenes, right? All you see is me a lot of times, and, and, and you know, a lot has to happen from everybody else in the company in order for you to get good newsletters, for the production to happen, uh, just the editorial where you're getting good information, where it's all being proof before it goes out and, and really smart people behind the scenes. And that is all evident because of you know, not just the partners, but for you guys. And you know, I'll end on this note, V, where I launched a security token because I realized that you know, what are the weaknesses that we have? As a business, you should always look at, you know, how you can compete and what you can compete with. And you can't compete with bigger companies when it comes to money. Uh, where they could acquire anyone, they can get better talent than you. And I knew weaknesses from working at the larger firms of how, you know, certain of the things that they won't do for, for some of their employees. And launching this token has given me the opportunity to raise money. Now, what does that mean, the security token? It means that we're publicly traded. Uh, we expect to get more volatility on it, more volume, which is going to be fantastic. But now we could take that and use that token, which is stock, as currency. Now we could purchase some of our competitors because we have a great valuation, a much higher valuation when you're publicly traded compared to when you're private. You could do that for stock. Uh, you give those people equity stakes if you want, and you hire great talent. You can hire amazing people. But now you have a public structure where the people you bring in, you can provide incentives for them through your stock of if they're able to generate revenue through marketing, if they're able to generate revenue through copy, uh, they're going to get a piece of that. And also that results in a higher equity stake. So everybody participates in this. And I knew under this structure that it resulted in a lot of people coming on board. Uh, it allows us to compete with our larger players. And now we're in the process, now that everything is set up, uh, I'm looking forward to the next stage, which is a lot of M&A, a lot of growth, a lot of hiring, uh, and building some products for you guys. And all of that is because of the trust that you guys have given us where you're raising $4 million to really build the company and use that money wisely. And we still have a lot of that money, which is great. And uh, you know, see where we are right now. We're in a really good position and I'm excited. And the, uh, you have a big part of that, got someone behind the scenes. I just want to say thanks and thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I hope um, all the listeners find it interesting and uh yeah i our investors were incredible just to give the faith to you to invest in the company and we certainly uh do not intend to disappoint them no nah, that sounds great and, and we don't and we don't disappoint so thank you so much for, for for coming on and uh yeah i think uh everybody will hear from you soon so uh all right we'll leave the interview there guys great stuff from veronica and you know, for me, I've never, and I said this in the past, I've never uh, made a decision based on money, at least in the last 15 years of my life. Uh, I never did that, and I never will. So this isn't about money to me. This is about building a legacy. This is about leaving something behind for my kids to look at, for the next generation, the generation after that. We're on this plant for a very small amount of time, and for me, I want to leave my mark on it. And I think you know, something is disruptive, there's something that's going to help individual investors. That's my motivation. And for everyone that did invest in that token, you know, that's the goal here to make this the greatest investment you ever made. Uh, and putting your trust in me really means a lot. So, uh, you know, just again, bring it on Veronica here behind the scenes. And I brought on Greg, uh, also who's had a copy, who generates tons of sales, which is amazing copy package, one of the best copy writers you'll see in the entire industry. And now that we're building up our team there, uh, if you're interested in joining us in any, any of these divisions, marketing as well, frankcurzyresearch.com. Again, welcome to the new format. Interviews are going to be separate. Try to keep them to around 30 minutes. And then tomorrow, it's going to be day and live, breaking down the markets and having some fun with the best stories and sharing lots and lots of ideas with you on how to play these big stories and the biggest stories in the markets for that week uh, because I know you guys love no ideas. So thanks so much for listening and I'll see you soon. Take care.